Tucker Carlson, you know him, agrees with General Michael Flynn. There were nefarious conspiracies going on at the highest level in government. We're going to tell you what happened. You know, and as, as Tucker says in, the, in my movie, I can't think of anything more perverse than these people who are essentially spokespeople for the United States government and the United States intelligence community. And they're acting as analysts on these news shows telling me, us, the American people. Yeah. Let me ask you about that. I find it amazing that these same people, people like I saw James Clapper the other day. Yeah. And he's got a cheering squad at CNN and MSNBC as if it's four years ago. And there's, there's no evidence that's come out since then that these people, including Clapper, were participating in a conspiracy, I guess, to undermine the duly elected officials running our country. And they're very proud even today. But the point is, why is there no media pushback? Why is there no fact checking? These people are giving interviews to cheerleaders, not journalists. I, I, I think the reason why is because the corporate media, you know, we, we, we used to call them the main, you know, the people would refer to them as the mainstream media. I don't use that phrase anymore. It's corporate owned media. The mainstream media in the United States of America is now these, these independent voices like yours who have large audiences that have taken on the mantra of truth and said, look, you know, I'm not gonna, you don't have to listen to these, to this corporate media anymore. The corporate media are, they're, you know, bought and paid for, right? They are, they, they have to follow a party line. And the party line is an ideological line of communism. That's the direction that we're heading. People don't realize that the Communist Party of America was created post-World War One, right? After the, after the Great War, right? In Europe, I mean, post-World War One, And that Communist Party after World War Two started to really grab hold of elements in our government but it wasn't clearly defined. It wasn't, it wasn't developed back in the late 50s, early 60s. It has become part and parcel of the institutions of the media, of the intelligence community, of our government, of the, certainly of the executive branch, and other parts of our, of our system here in the United States of America. The education system is one. The, the, the healthcare system. These are socialist systems and the corporate media, the corporate media is right there. They are going to toe the line, whatever the narrative must be. So the, so this ideology of socialism and communism can take on a much, much greater role in this government. And, you know, one of the other things about the 51, because there's actually some evidence and it's, and, and it's been proven that there's a couple of people that were actually inside. I think they were inside the CIA that actually crafted the letter. Tony Blinken was part of it. Tony Blinken, the current Secretary of State was part of it. So they, there was somebody inside the government. As we now know, there were others inside the government that were undermining, while, while Trump was the president, while he was the serving president of the United States of America, we now know through the Twitter gate files that there was people that were censoring him censoring people around him, censoring his political campaign going into 2020, that were working inside of the government with organizations like these tech titan social media companies in Silicon Valley. I mean, if, if, there's, if, if there's treason, that's it. And these are people that were actually members of the government who, who took the same oath of office or similar oath of office that I did to fight and you know to protect and defend this constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And these people were undermining their president. Okay, never mind those 51 who may have been outside of the government, but they were still, they're all still tied to the government. They're tied through government contracts they have, they're tied through government security clearances that they all still maintain. I mean, it like there is nothing more perverse than that. And they committed, as far as I'm concerned, they committed treason and they must be held accountable. If we don't hold them accountable, then we're not gonna have the country that we love and cherish. We're not, we have to hold people accountable.